Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Figure Skating Marketing Summit Taipei 2021. This is the second and also the last day of the summit. And today, we will start with a panel about the fifth virtual judging system. The virtual judging system is a bold and necessary move of the ISU to adapt to the post-pandemic international event organization. It is believed to be the future of figure skating events and we need to explore the marketing potential and the integration of the system to existing business model. Leading the Spanish winter sports for decades, Mr. Xavier Chelta has led the Spanish Ice Sport Federation to be a front-running adopter of the ISU virtual judging system and has organized both national and international competitions in the virtual format. While to most of the ice skating associations in the world, a virtual figure skating competition may appear unheard of, Mr. Cheta is ready to share with us a very concrete organizing experience, his vision of the virtual competition, and its role in figure skating's global development. He's joined by Ms. Elena Iniguez de Heredia, ISU International Judge from Mexico. So welcome Mr. Cheta and welcome Ms. Iniguez. Hi. And now we'll have Mr. Cheta to have his presentation first, and then Ms. Iniguez will join us later to have discussion. So now, Mr. Cheta, it's your time. Thank you very much for inviting us to, to share with uh, the international community of figure skating uh, our experience in the virtual judging system. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a presentation that's going to serve me as a, to follow all the ideas I want to share with you. Just give me a second. Okay. I hope you see the presentation. Yeah. You can see it like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, basically, what I'm what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna explain you our experience. I'm not, as I said, I'm not an expert in virtual judging, but uh, we had a, we had a situation to face during the pandemic, and and we are looking uh, to different options how to solve this situation and the virtual judging. Was the was a great solution for for us, but basically, what was the situation uh, in 2000? As you all know, unfortunately, we had we have to cancel all the national and international events during 2020 uh, due to the pandemic, and and the consequences and, and the situation we had in the, in Spanish uh, figure skating was that basically one thing that happened and was really important for us is that. Um, the skaters, they, they, even though they were they were competing and continuing training in their arenas, um, they were going a lot of motivation and, and, and I would say disappointed because uh, yeah, all the efforts, all the all the all the all the work they were doing for the for the for the year for 2020, um, they couldn't they couldn't see the results of this of this uh, efforts. So it was um, it was getting really, really necessary to our skaters to, to have the competitions, yeah? to have competitions to showcase all the, all the work. Um, and especially in the, in the national event, this was one of the important things for us to, to be able to host the, national, the nationals in, in Spain. Then the other main um, issue that we were facing in 2020 uh, with the pandemic was that uh, we had one spot at the World Championships for, for the competition in ice dance. And we have, we have two uh, pairs competing in this, uh, in, in this event. Both pairs are in a top uh, world uh, level. And we had to decide which, which one of those pairs was going to represent Spain in this World Championships. Yeah. The problem, uh, if they would have been in Spain, training in Spain or somewhere in, in close to Spain, like France or uh, Italy, Maybe this would have been easier, but the thing is that we have one pair training in Moscow and the other pair is training in Montreal. So you can imagine how difficult it was to put them, uh, to gather them together 
and, and, and host an event to decide which pair was going to represent Spain in, in the World Championships. So basically, the, the conclusion was that we had to host the nationals, whatever it takes. It was really important for us for the, for the um, confidence and the work of our, uh, of, of our figure skaters, but also for, to, this, to make important decisions for the future of figure skating in Spain. Um, then we had one plan, plan A, which was uh, to host the, the national uh, events physically, and we finally did for most of the, of the competitions. And we, but we had to be prepared for a B plan, which was uh, to host the nationals uh, virtually. And this is when we started to, to make some research uh, to try to imagine how would it be to organize a, a virtual competition in figure skating. We, we knew that there were other sports doing um, the same. Um, and we were, we were starting to do some benchmark, benchmarking and we had to face different, different uh, challenges. So basically five, I, I, I have five in more, groups of you know, challenges. First one is the competition logistics. So uh, if you, um, you organize the nationals in Spain, you have you need three days of ice. So from uh, Friday till Sunday, all day, from six o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. Um, could you imagine how would it be uh, to host this event um, in different rings um, with um, with uh, connections through Zoom, video, etc. All the all the problems you can have in this kind of competitions when you do it uh, in the distance. Then uh, this was one of the most important challenges we had to face. Then the other one was the cost. I mean, if you here in Spain at least, when you organize the nationals, you have to pay the eyes, you have to pay uh, everything. So if you multiply this cost uh, for different rings where you have clubs competing in the nationals, um, which are about ten clubs in Spain. Plus the, the the competitors we have abroad, and as I said, we had uh, we have uh, skaters in Montreal, we have skaters in Moscow, but we have also in Lyon, uh, in Italy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so it was a, it was a huge challenge for us uh, if we wanted to have this uh, virtual competition. The cost was going to be huge for us. Then the audiovisual audiovisual uh, things that we had to solve. Um, we had, if we would do it, we had two options. We could do it live, like a live event, or we could do it uh, in a delay format. So you record all the all the programs of all the skaters, and then you put it together, wrap it together in a in a in a additional content, and you stream it uh, after a few days. Live, um, you have the immediacy of the of the event. It's what uh, the, the audience is looking for. They want to know it right now. What's happening? Uh, but it takes, uh, as I said, it would take a long, long, long time. At least at the time when we were working this in this project. Um, and but if we would do it in delay, um, the problem was that we would need maybe two, or three days to uh, wrap together all the all the content. So uh, the decision was to be taken. Also, the question of the signal, the stability of the audiovisual uh, content that we were going to broadcast. And for those who are specialists in figure skating, you know that uh, it's not the same um, to judge uh, an event in person, in the ring, than doing this um, from home uh, through a video. And so we had to ensure that the quality of the video was the highest possible. And with no with with a stability in the signal, right? Then I mean we were in the pandemic time, so COVID testing protocols um, again uh, 10, 12, 15 uh, rings at the same time, and on all of them with uh, testing protocols. But those all those uh, problems and challenges that I'm, I've been telling now um, were were possible to solve, were easy to solve. With a question of organization and, and money, right? If uh, we knew how to do it, we knew how to. If we had the the money, we, we could do everything. But the, the the only problem that we were not able to to solve was the judging judging system. So to to how do you do you judge an event that is happening all around the world from the distance? And that's when uh, we were talking with uh, Elena and her co their, her colleagues, and then we, we we thought that it was possible, right? And Elena, I'm sure she will talk about all the insights of the event and many other events. Um, yeah. 
then how did we implement it? Um, the implementation was um, basically logistics. What we decided was uh, to, uh, we, we decided not to host the nationals because it was too complicated and, <clears throat> and risk it and organize it in April when we thought it was going to be possible in Spain to organize a, an event on site and as it happened. But we still needed to decide who, who was the, the couple that was going to represent Spain in the World Championship. So we decided to host this virtual event just with, with the two couples, one of them in Moscow and the other one in Montreal. Um, we decided that it should take no, uh, it ideally everything should have been alive, but if we couldn't do it live as it happened, um, <clears throat> the time between the, the first program and the results shouldn't be longer than 48 hours. You know, why? Because, uh, you know, in figure skating, it's uh, in, in other sports also, it's uh, a lot of um, noise from media, from the from the spectators, from the clubs. Um, they want to know it uh, immediately, everything. So we were a bit, um, I wouldn't say scared, but kind of scared that uh, uh, people would know or we would, we would make public the results before we would do it. So we needed to shorten the, the time of everything uh, as much as possible. Then what we did was the first day we recorded all the exercises, and then the second day um, we judged, uh, we, we showed the, the exercises in a row, in a row, and the judges, and they they judged it in during an afternoon from different parts of the world, and they gave us the results the same day. <clears throat> we wanted the competition to be as official as possible, so uh, with uh, the warm up times where the athletes were in the, the competition customs and we give them, we did, since we did the, the short and the long program the same day, we did give them four hours break between both programs. And uh, it was really important. We, we gave them just one, one try per program. So they couldn't repeat. And this was very important to make it as similar as a competition. And the way we did it to uh, make sure they were not uh, cheating on us and, <laughs> You know, uh, was that we we send our own um, recording crews, but also uh, we ask them to to show us uh, for the warm up time to show us their uh, telephones with the time of the with the time that it was at the time. Uh, here is a short video of uh, Adri and Olivia. Adri was so showing. No, no, no. Take your time. Slower. So, can you see? Yes. Yes, so we start the warm up now. Okay. So basically, we had uh, a camera uh, crew that was uh, broadcasting or streaming <coughs> the video live, but at the same time, to make sure that this signal was live, we had uh, one person on site recording with a mobile phone that. Uh, he was recording the cameraman and he was recording also the exercise to make sure that everything was happening at the time. Yeah, here's the audit visual protocol is the one I just explained to you. Yeah. And an implementation of the judging system. Um, we, I think it was really important. It was an uh, easy, functional and reliable system. Uh, we had really big dubs before we, we decided to do it. But um, Elena uh, explained us everything, all the insights of the, of the system. And, and one of the things that for us was really important, it was, it was simple to understand, to understand. It was really simple to understand and to implement. Then um, one thing that was also very good for us, especially coming from a, a small country in figure skating, is that the selection of the judges allow us uh, to have a wider uh, offer than usually. That means... Normally, when we organize the nationals, we have only uh, the national uh, judges available, and then we have to try to find two or three more judges from somewhere else in the world to come to Spain. Uh, since this event happens virtually, the judges can judge from, the, from home. So uh, in this sense, all judges around the world were available for us, so we could choose which judges we wanted to, to judge this event. Um, and yeah, so the, this is basically how we implemented the, the system. I'm going to show you another small video of how, what I was saying about the, the camera positions. You see, we did, the day before, we did some tests um, on where was the, the right position for the cameras, 
um, because um, as you say, as you know, in, <clears throat> this wasn't it wasn't a um, a TV event. So with a TV event, we would have been using uh, three, four, or five cameras to showcase the event from different points of uh, perspective. But uh, it was very important for the judges that just one camera was recording, and that with this camera we could capture the whole uh, ring. So this is what we did. Yeah. And finally, because I'm sure there are going to be some questions, and Elena has also some insights that are very relevant and important. For me, the key learnings and, and reflections to be uh, to do um, around the virtual judging and the virtual events is the virtual events are here to stay. I'm sure this we have learned a lot, and, and there's a, an excellent tool. Um, also, that the, the virtual judging system is reliable. We, you, you can trust it. It's, uh, as I said, it's easy to manage. Um, judges like it. Uh, I'm sure there are amendments to do, uh, improvements, more than amendments, but um, it's something we can rely on. Um, it allows us uh, truly international panels. So it's uh, for skaters, they, it gives, um, gives them sense of uh, being in, an, in a really international event with uh, the best judges possible. I also have to say against the, the virtual system that uh, is, will never be the first option, but it's uh, certainly uh, an excellent option, an excellent tool to, to host events. And, and it gives us a lot of new programming and visual content options in, for the future. Yeah. So uh, I think it's more or less what I wanted to throw out in the, in the first moment. And if there's any question, I will be happy to answer. And now we'll invite Ms. Iniguez to join us again to have discussions. Hi, Ms. Iniguez. Hello. Hola. And so I'm really curious about how many cam cameras and cameramen should be sent to each ring, and is there um, the, is the amount enough? Because you have people in Montreal, in other space, or maybe in Russia. How, how do you manage all the cameramen? You want me to answer or Elena? Me? Okay. Um, the way we, we it, was, it was enough for the competition with one camera at each ring was enough, right? Um, the way we managed is we hired, uh, we contacted a, com a broadcasting company at each city and we hired their services. That's it. Uh, but as I said at the end of the presentation, um, this was a competition focus of, for the for the event, if um, we would have think to have this event as a as a as a TV program, and we had the idea, we were thinking about it. Obviously, we would have need uh, a bigger bigger crew, camera crew with uh, three, four, five uh, cameras on site in each one of the of the rings. And the reason why we didn't do it was because it was the first the first. Uh, time we were doing this, we were a bit scared of what was going to, to happen, uh, and Elena knows it. Eh? And um, but now with experience, uh, I think I think there's a there's a lot of path to to go through because um, you can record, as I said, you can record from uh, skaters from all around the world, put it together in a in a in a video and introduce interviews. You can introduce. Um, um, clips from the history uh, of the, each one of the scares, a presenter, some commentators, and with uh, an event that took us uh, one day, we could um, have a two hours program talking about the both couples, how good they are, their story about stories about them, major uh, international athletes talking about how good they are. You know, you can create you can create the story around it. So um, yeah, it's a good it's a good opportunity. And I'm also curious about um, what is the most interesting part and what is the most challenging part to create, to set up this virtual judging system. And can Ms. Iniguez share with us some about ex your experience? Of course, yes. Thank you for having me. 
Um, I have a little presentation if you want me to share to tell you about how the system was created and it's part of a much bigger uh, project. So I want to talk about that. So the online scoring system or the virtual judging system that um, the Spanish Federation used um, among other organizations around the world is part of what we call the virtual events toolkit. So what is this virtual events toolkit? It's a set of tools that we developed um, among with other colleagues from around the world. And it's an open source of instructions and tools and videos and all kinds of um, guidelines on how to organize a virtual event, any kind of virtual event. Xavi told us about uh, their specific example for a qualifying competition, but there are many other examples that you can use uh, the virtual system and, and the toolkit itself. I'm showing here some of these examples are technical panel practice, you can do trial judging, you can have monitoring sessions for skaters, domestic competitions, any meetings or seminars or training programs. And as Javi mentioned as well, you can do it with live events or you could do it with recorded videos like they used in, in Spain. So this toolkit is available in the ISU e-learning platform and it's open and free to use for everyone in the skating community. So to answer your question, how was this project born? Well, during 2020, everything was canceled uh, for figure skating. You know, rinks were closed, events were canceled worldwide. So exactly as, as Xavi mentioned, uh, in, that was happening in Spain, the same was happening in this part of the world. I'm from South America. So we wanted to keep our skaters motivated. We wanted to do something for them to keep showing up and, and, and training and, and feeling that what they were doing was worth it. So we started trying out with virtual events, just like some other people did uh, in other parts of the world as well. So at some point through networking, we connected the dots and we created a team of uh, different people with some experience, with some things that worked better than others. And we started developing um, this toolkit that included the virtual judging system. Um, Ariadna Morones, uh, an official that she's, she's the official from Mexico that developed the system, and also another ISU and international officials uh, were part of the team as well. So it was born like that, out of a need um, and out of like, trying things out and, and see what happened, and most of it through teamwork uh it, it was a really really uh teamwork at some point we had some ice rings uh slowly opening so we started trying different things uh with, with them connecting cameras at the rink and, and inviting judges uh to try uh to try um the event we started with a spin competition and then we started moving forward with some other elements like jumps or uh, until we ended up with full programs and one of the um, results is the example that uh, Spain had for themselves. So how was it implemented worldwide? Like I mentioned, it was not um, only thought for competitions, it was thought for uh, all those sorts of different um, purposes. And it's not that we thought about it, it, it kind of kept happening uh, while we started using it. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the main um, purposes was monitoring or feedback sessions for skaters. Uh, we can connect skaters from Europe with officials from Asia or from America for or around the world. So that can be very beneficial for skaters throughout the whole season. We also had some meetings and seminars for officials, coaches, and skaters. Like I mentioned earlier, any training or education opportunity um, can be done with international officials or coaches. Um, and this is particularly important, for example, for development countries. Uh, those 
parts of the world where figure skating is not that popular, then now we can have um, better opportunities or easier opportunities to connect with international experts for any kind of meeting for discussions or training programs. Or I think that this summit is a very um, real example of, of, of something like that. Then trial or practice judging, you know, that um, judges and, and technical specialists uh, have to study and practice a lot uh, throughout their development um, for their career. So trial um, events for them to practice, it's a great opportunity and they can do it from the comfort of their homes. So this is one of the main benefits of, that we found uh, for officials itself. As well as technical pilot practices, we had specialists from different parts of the world connecting um, on Zoom and with videos they practice calling just as if they were together at the ring, but uh, from different parts of the, of the, con of the continents. So live competitions would be another example. It's very similar to what uh, Xavi told us about the Spanish example. The difference is that instead of recording a video and then having a session, you just connect the camera from the ring live to the session on Zoom where you have the, the, the panel of, of officials. So it it's a little bit more risky, if you want to say, because... Of course, everything can get disconnected at any moment, but uh, if you can guarantee that connections are strong, we found that this format is uh, amazing for motivating the, the skaters because they feel like the whole thing is very, very similar to what they are used to um, in real events. And then, of course, competitions with submitted videos, um, as it was explained before. And these are only some examples Uh Maybe there are people using the toolkit for different projects around the world that we don't know of. Um, and we would love to hear some ideas as well. And one of the main um, things or the most important parts of the this is that it involved judges and officials and coaches and skaters from all the skating community. We had figure skating clubs organizing uh, domestic competitions with, with the virtual judging system. We had IEC members, like this example from Spain, uh, using it for to, to cover a very special need. For example, like this qualifying for ISNAS that was very important for them. We had officials from all disciplines, synchronized skating, ISNAS, singles, pairs, every, everybody used this virtual uh, judging system and the toolkit to, to do uh, different kinds of projects. And um, we also have developing nations, countries that are um, in the process of applying for an ISU membership. They are using the toolkit also uh, to, to get those requirements uh, fulfilled and, and in a in much um, easier way. We That we know of, we have more than country, 40 countries involved from every continent in the world and like i said this is an open source it's available for everyone so maybe there are more i'm sure that there are more countries and people using it that we don't know of so it's a very worldwide thing uh, that actually got the skating community together from every part of the world of course there are some challenges and i mentioned some of the benefits the main challenge uh, is the learning curve that is associated with it, not only from the virtual judging system itself. Uh, of course, officials uh, are used to a touch screen at the rink, and this is something different. They have to type their marks, and there is something, uh, some, some little stuff that are uh, a little bit different. So there is a learning curve um, associated with it and also for organizers. Um, I'm an even, even manager, so I'm from, from that side of um, the crew. There's also some things to learn and, and to have um, in mind when organizing a virtual event that are different from, from a real one. Then also there are different levels of technology uh, proficiency in the people that are working together, especially officials. Um, so we always uh, encourage people to have a rehearsal um, so that they have 
the opportunity to test the system and to use it um, before the, the the real event. We we always send them um, all the instructions, and there are instructions in written format and in video format, so that they can learn differently how to use the system. But then we'll always host a rehearsal for them to actually use it and test it and try it out, and to came up with all the questions that they might have so that the day of the event, everything runs smoothly. Of course, um, some people know a lot about using computers and some people do not know so much. So and that is one of the challenges, but it's uh, very easy to solve it with these rehearsals and with all the materials and guidelines that are on the toolkit available. Another challenge is that officials are not responsible for preparing everything, everything by themselves. Uh, like it was mentioned, um, judges and specialists are at their home. So we don't have the volunteers preparing the panel for them <clears throat> and making coffee and creating copies and doing all that stuff that is done by the organizing committee now that they had to do it themselves at home. So there is that preparation uh, phase that some are not used to, but uh, also organizers that need to offer them and, and make available all the instructions and, and guidelines on how to do that uh, easily. But I think that these are all challenges that are easy to overcome. And of course, it takes time and effort and, and work. But it's something that I think that the Spanish example um, is, is a very successful one to, to tell you that it's not anything that the skating community cannot overcome. And then talking about the benefits, you can cover distances, uh, like Shabi mentioned, uh, very easily. You can have officials from any part of the world available for your event, and that is a major asset uh, for the skaters and, and for the organizations. You can save travel expenses that for developing countries, it could be a major um, benefit. Um, for example, here in South America, we used to uh, be able to bring international officials to our competitions only once a year because of limited resources. So now we can have them different times of year. So that can uh, that can mean a much bigger development for our skaters because they can have feedback from high level international officials uh, throughout the whole season, and that is. Uh, that is huge for, for these parts of the, of the world. Then the building community, like I mentioned, it, it was not um, a one-person job. It, it was a very um, successful and motivated and, and fun teamwork. Uh, and, and it brings the community together very closely. Uh, countries that were not um, part of, of big events started to um, be able to collaborate and contribute to, to the skating community. And then uh, some other countries with more, more expertise could share the knowledge with, with others. Uh, it's really, this is outstanding and, and is one of the um, best uh, ways of, of uh, one of the best benefits of this toolkit and, and the virtual judging. Then it simplifies logistics a little bit. Well, from from where you see it, once you get used to doing these virtual things, it simplifies logistics. You know how to book travels, uh, flights, and, and hotel rooms, and, and bring people together into one location. You just have to connect them. Um, so in some way, it, it simplified. And for some others, it might be a little bit more complex. But it, it logistics are totally um, easy to to manage, and. Much more. I'm, I'm sure that uh, there are many other benefits that I'm not thinking about right now, but it brings um, a lot of good things to skaters and to coaches and to officials and to organizations and to all the skating community. I don't think that uh, virtual events are meant to replace uh, the real ones. That's not the, the goal and that's not the purpose. And it's not that we're going to host the world championships the, with virtual judging, but for these uh, cases, of development or specific needs that federations uh, might have, it's it's a very useful tool and it's a very powerful way to solve it. So, like I said, this is available uh, in the e-learning um, site. It's open, it's free, and uh, everybody can access by creating an account and and use it. And there are also the team that developed 
the toolkit is, is available for um, advice or answer any questions that may arise when, when using um, the tools in the system as well. Yes, evening is. And here's some questions from the audiences. First, this is a question to Mr. Cheta. In your view, do you think this virtual competition format will continue? Is there a sustainable way to address the costs incurred? How do you think about it, Mr. Cheta? Mm, I think it will continue. Uh, but as, as Elena was saying right now, it. Um, I see it as an excellent tool for development purposes or for certain events, you know. Uh, I, I'm not thinking um, that we're going to host a major international event using the, the, the virtual system, but I, I can imagine um, using it more often to, to do some trials with our athletes, with our skaters. Um, I can imagine, as I said, using it to prepare some footage for, for TVs where we have, you know, creating content that can be sponsorized and, and distributed through internet. Um, I can imagine also using it to prepare our, 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 um, our judges also. I mean, uh, we, we are trying to have more judges all around the world. And one of the things, they, the problems they have is they don't have experience. Um, why don't we use it to, to give them experience? It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a, a proper competition. It can be a, an unofficial competition for training the, the skaters, but also the the, the, the judges. So I, I think, as I said, it's the virtual judging is going to stay with us. It's um, but it's going to develop also. Yeah. I'm curious about uh, who should pay for the costs. The committee or the skaters for the virtual judging system, if they want to use it. I can I can speak from from, from our experience in in Spain. We when we organize a competition, the federation is responsible for paying everything. The skater uh, is doing only a, a registration, paying a registration fee to the competition, and that's all. I don't know if Elena has have some experience with our situations, Elena. I don't know. Um, well, yeah, um, usually it's like that, but I wanted to say that the online scoring system uh, is available for free. So if any organization wants to download it and using it, uh, there is no cost associated. Of course, for an event that is a little bit bigger, like like the, the example from, from Spain that it was a qualifying for world, so they hire these uh, professional cameras and, and all that, that, uh, that has a cost associated. And, and like Charlie said, it, it was covered by the Federation. But you can easily do it with a camera that you already have. Uh, we had some domestic events uh, run with... Um, smartphones recording videos nowadays smartphones have amazing cameras with high definition so all the instructions are available there and there is possible uh, it is possible to host an event with no cost associated as well thank you and for the next question do you think there's a possibility that the virtual judging system will stay and last after covid19 pandemic and become a trend in future competition so how how do you think about this, Mr. Chota? Hmm. Um, as I said, I think it will stay. Uh, it will develop in certain situations. Um, I was thinking where, while we were talking that maybe we have, we we end up in hybrid uh, events where everybody's competing together. So the all the skaters are in the same ring but the judges are the only ones um, judging from home. I don't know if Elena, the, the experience already exists or not, but that is one thing I'm, I'm thinking about for the future. Because as I said, we have, in Spain, we have problems with the, with the judges to, to, to have enough judges qualified for, for judging the, the national competition. So if, if the um, um, skating family would accept it, this would be an excellent uh, development for this tool. Yeah, it has been done. We had skaters yeah. at the uh, at one ring and judges virtually, and um, I, I completely agree with you. I think that it was developed because of the pandemic, because we had the real need 
but it's not something that once we go back to normal, we will stop using because we found that specifically for development, uh, it's it's a very powerful tool. So I, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's going to stay uh, for those purposes specifically, yeah. And what is the feedback from the skaters? Do, you, do they like, do they enjoy this virtual judging system? Usually they do, yeah. Um, well, they're happy that they are able to, to show their skating and, and to get that feedback. Uh, of course, it's not the same as, as being in, a, in a, uh, a, an environment and meeting other skaters and all that. Nothing is going to replace that. It, that that's not the idea. But uh, imagine that you have been skating for a whole year, not being able to show up, or show it up to the world. Once you have the chance, they are very grateful for that. And um, some of the uh, of, of the events I mentioned, they they included also feedback sessions. So they get together on 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 the meeting with the officials, their coaches, the skaters, the officials, and they have this discussion. That's that's very beneficial for skaters. So yeah, they 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 enjoy it and they they see the benefit of it. I'm curious that um, for the skaters who have virtual judging system, do they seem more nervous or more at ease compared to the real one? Do what do you think, Shari? What was the experience with the ice and steam? I think, no, it, and it's linked to the, the previous question. Uh, in uh -huh. our case, we did it just with, two, with, four, with four skaters, right? Two couples. Um, they, they were, it was a competition for them. So they, they were so scared and so nervous as they are in any competition. Probably more because they were on their own in the ring. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. uh, deciding that you're going to go to the world championships and nobody's there. It's you and, and your coach. It's, 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 it's strange for them. So um, it was more, yeah, this strange situation for them. And, but I think it was important, and this is important for also for the, for the whole project, is that in, this is an ISU certified, I would say. Right? So ISU says this is something that is working. So once the athletes know, they, the athletes know it, and then they are uh, more confident with the system. They asked us uh, how it's going to be done. They, they were curious about who was going to judge. And they were, they were making a lot of questions, but uh, I mean, this, as I said, the system is, is easy at the end. It's, it's, a, it's the judging system that you have in any ring, but online. That's it. Simple. Yeah? So, it, uh, the, yeah, I think they're going to make a lot of questions the first time. But after they try it once, it's like in a, pro, a normal competition for them. I don't know, Elena, if it's like this for you also. Yeah, I agree. I think it's like that. Uh, mostly those questions are because of the unknown part of it. Uh, you know, like, oh, what happens if it gets disconnected? What happens if the video is not high quality? Do I have to skate again? So as from the organizing point of view, you have to cover all those uh, questions. Uh, so you, you have to be able to answer them and you have to cover all those risks as well. Um, because, yes, there is a risk of disconnection and, and, and um, you have to be prepared to... Um, to cover for that, uh, but yeah, I agree. They're gonna get used to it, and in the end, it's it's benefit for for all parts. And do you see normal events happening with all skaters in one ring, but with the judges connected remotely, so that limits some of the travel expenses and gives you your uh, an international field of judges more easily for international judges? How do you think about it, Miss Inigas? Yeah, like I said, it has been done, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, done again. Um, of course, again, not for any event. Uh, for, for high standards competitions, you still need to have the judges there. Um, but for domestic events and, and for other purposes, yeah, for sure. Uh, spe especially for development. Um, I, I, I know for a fact that some countries are trying to apply for ISC membership and they're using the virtual judging uh, to have a bigger panel. But instead of 
having to pay for travel expenses for three international judges. They're, they now have the possibility to have a full panel of nine judges and three specialists uh, judging their nationals to cover that requirement. Um, so, yes, for sure, I think it's, um, it, it's very good. How do you think about it, Mr. Chelta? Sorry, say it again. How, how do you think about it that more and more judges can be involved in different kinds of competition mm -hmm. if, if it no, uh, remaining remotely? Uh, I think it, it doesn't have a system that um, it opened up, opened up for, for small countries with a lack of judges to, to be able to organize major events or events with uh, with uh, judges from abroad, and the judges, um, and the judges, I think they they once is like the situation is the same as with the with the skaters. First time they heard about it, it's uh, like uh, they're not really sure if uh, they're gonna manipulate somebody's gonna manipulate their judging or anything. But once they you, you explain them how is it gonna work and and who's behind the the whole uh, system, then they accept it and they're happy. Yeah. Are the judges giving similar scores when they are physically in an event than when they are scoring remotely? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I have to be honest that at the first times that they do it, especially especially with videos, uh, there is some some period that they have to adapt. It's it's not one hundred percent the same as being there. Uh, one one thing that they mention a lot is that. It's curious that with the videos or with the camera, all of the judges have the same angle, the same point of view. Usually uh, at the ring, the, the one of the of what, what side of the panel and the other one, they have different uh, points of view. So that's one of the difference to, uh, to mention. It's not 100% the same. And that's why we uh, emphasize that it's not to host international competitions uh, or high level events, but for for uh, the purposes that we mentioned, it, it, it's, yeah, it's entirely the same and, and judges know how to do their work. So it's not that they're going to change uh, the way they judge. Uh, everything is, is exactly the same and, and the system works exactly the same as the one they use at the rink. And do you see that from the ISU side to drive the progress of development through this system more actively? How do you think about it, Mr. Chelta? Well, I think they they've done they've done it quite good as as far as for us, you know. Um, they have created the or they have implemented this this tool that uh, in another federation could have been more difficult. They have they trusted the, the the need of this and they understand the need of this tool, and they have embraced the the tool really quickly. Yeah, because uh, I think uh, the pandemic was the beginning of 2020. And by summer, the tool was already developed. Elena, wasn't it summer? Because we started we started to talk in summer, I think, more or less. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was officially published uh, during January 2021. Uh, it was it was a few months of development, but yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I think that it was uh, super important to come with with the ISC support. Uh, we were. Just trying things out and, you know, like sharing it with with friends and colleagues. But now it's open for everybody, uh, any figure skating uh, group of people. It doesn't even have to be an ISU member or a federation. Uh, any any can can use it and gather it. And and it's it's uh, huge that they have this available for development. Thank you, both. Let me say that. Sorry. Let me let me say only that. Um, Again, ISU has done a, an excellent job um, embracing this this new tool for development because I see it more for development than for other things. But um, what uh, Elena and Adriana have done is amazing, and and, and the, the rest of the team, the, the person I've been talking to is Elena and Adriana, but it's a big team around the world, and and I, I want to encourage all countries to use it and to try it. And if they have any doubt, uh, call Elena. She's um, a nice person, <laughs> uh, and she knows a lot about what she's doing. So, um, if you have any doubt, try, talk to her, and and then you will try it. Yeah. So don't 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 hesitate to don't contact them. 
Thank you, Mr. Cheta, and also thank you, special thanks to Ms. Inigis, who is now in Peru, where it is almost 4 a.m. in the morning, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 3 a.m. right now. <laughs> really appreciate your participation. Thank you so much. See you. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.